This is the story of one of the most catastrophic failures in the history of modern medicine. It's about a man who remained 100% conscious during his own major surgery. In this video, we're going to explore exactly how a system designed for safety failed so badly. In 2006, a man named Sherman Sizemore entered a hospital for what was supposed to be a routine exploratory operation to try and find the cause of his recurring abdominal pain. What unfolded on that operating table is an event so disturbing it would permanently alter medical protocols around the world. This case forces us to ask a fundamental question. What happens when the very system designed to protect the patient during the most vulnerable moment breaks down? Let's get into it. The process of creating a state of general anesthesia relies on two distinct and critical components. First is the anesthetic agent itself. Powerful drugs are administered through an IV line directly into the bloodstream to render the brain unconscious. This state, known as a medically induced coma, ensures that you're unaware, unable to form memories, and unable to feel pain. The second component is the administration of a neuromuscular blockade, in other words, a muscle paralyzer. These drugs induce a temporary but complete paralysis of the skeletal muscles. You can't move, you can't twitch, you can't even breathe on your own. This stillness is essential for the surgeon to operate with precision. For the vast majority of surgeries, the use of both of these components is non-negotiable. One drug quiets the mind, while the other quiets the body. In the case of Sherman Sizemore, he received the paralytic and his body became perfectly still. All that was needed was that first step, to switch off his consciousness. But that didn't happen, at least not for a long time. The situation Sherman found himself in is almost unimaginable. He was completely paralyzed, unable to move a single muscle, but his mind remained fully awake. He could hear the conversations of the surgical team. He could feel the cold of the operating room, and then he could feel the surgeon's scalpel he was trapped inside his own body, a silent witness to his own operation. Internally, his body was sending every possible distress signal. When the first incision was made, his heart rate and blood pressure instantly rose to dangerously high levels, and his metabolic rate surged. These were pretty clear signs of extreme physiological stress. For 16 minutes, Sherman couldn't do anything but just lay awake in pain as the surgeons worked inside his abdomen. He experienced every awful sensation of the tortuous procedure. But somehow, the medical team misinterpreted the signals. They attributed his spiking vital signs to the stress of the surgery, not to the possibility that their patient was conscious and in agony. A subsequent lawsuit would allege that the anesthesiologist simply forgot to turn on the anesthetic gas until 16 minutes into the surgery. This phenomenon I've been describing is called anesthesia awareness. While it's incredibly rare, a few studies suggest that some form of awareness may occur in about one out of every 500 to 1,000 general anesthesia procedures. Most of these instances are fleeting, dreamlike moments of consciousness. But cases like Sherman's involving full painful awareness represent a completely different level of medical trauma. So what was happening inside his brain during this nightmare scenario? Well, first, there would have just been unfiltered pain. Without the anesthetic agent to block pain signals from the surgical site, they would have traveled unimpeded up the spinal cord and into the sensory cortex of the brain. He would have felt the raw physical reality of being cut open with a surgical blade. Second, his brain would have been imprinting traumatic memories. The hippocampus, a key region for memory formation, was fully active recording every horrible moment. The lawsuit later claimed that once the error was discovered, a drug that inhibits the formation of memories was administered in an attempt to erase or muddy his memory of the event. But these drugs aren't meant to erase memories that have already been registered. Plus, they're not always effective, especially in the face of such profound trauma. Third, there was the psychological impact. The state of being trapped Paralyzed and subjected to excruciating pain is a perfect storm for inducing severe post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. An experience this extreme doesn't just leave a bad memory. It can actually rewire the brain's response to stress and fear. When the surgery ended and the paralytic drugs wore off, 
Sherman Sizemore could finally move, but he was not the same person anymore. The attempt to chemically erase his memory had failed. He remembered everything. In the days that followed, he exhibited some classic symptoms of severe PTSD. He suffered from debilitating nightmares that prevented him from sleeping, and he developed an intense paranoia, telling his family he believed people were trying to bury him alive. The gentle, good-natured minister his family once knew was gone, replaced by a man haunted by an inescapable terror. Compounding his suffering, the lawsuit alleged that the hospital staff never even acknowledged what had happened. This silence left him in a state of hazy confusion, questioning whether the torture he remembered was real or a product of his own mind, deepening his psychological distress. Mr. Sizemore, a man with no prior history of mental illness, had his reality shattered. For Sherman Sizemore, the memory of those 16 minutes became an inescapable prison. The trauma was relentless, and two weeks after the surgery, he took his own life. His death prompted a lawsuit by his family against the anesthesiology group, which was eventually settled out of court. The case stands as one of the most tragic and well-documented examples of anesthesia awareness. It serves as a brutal lesson that events like this are not just abstract risks. They're real and often life-altering. Undergoing general anesthesia is an act of profound trust. In a very real sense, you're handing your life and consciousness over to a team of specialists, trusting them to keep you safe and unaware. And for the vast majority of the hundreds of millions of surgeries performed each year, that trust is well placed. The system is incredibly safe, but the story of Sherman Sizemore is a necessary reminder of the consequences when that trust is broken. His case sent a shockwave through the medical community forcing a critical re-examination of checklists, monitoring, and communication in the operating room. It demonstrates why vigilance is paramount and why every signal a patient's body sends should be listened to, because a life literally depends on it. If you found this breakdown informative or if it gave you a new perspective on what happens behind the doors of an operating room, please consider sharing it with someone who might find it as eye-opening as you did really helps the channel reach more viewers who are curious about the world in the same way you are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.